Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatevers. It's me, the Stone Whisperer, and we're back with more card pack openings of Hearthstone. Now, this recording seems to be cursed. The reason I'm saying it's cursed is that the first time I start recording it, I actually had the um, voice recording at an incredibly low uh, rate. Even after trying to clean it up and edit it, it was absolutely dreadful. It wasn't, you couldn't listen to it. I only actually did three packs that way before I noticed it, um, which is why this has gone from 33 down to 30. So I'm glad I picked that one up. Um, so the second time round when I started recording it, thankfully, uh, I noticed this before I actually opened the pack, I wasn't recording the video. So I'm now looking at the top left of my screen, and sorry, the top right of my screen even, I can see a video recording. At the bottom right of my screen, I can see uh, my um, audio kind of recording away here. That's the correct frequency range. So let's hope uh, the old gods haven't got their hands on uh, my recording here. So we'll open our first pack and see what we get. Now, oh, so our first one is the rare. So let's jump over. Now the good news is we didn't actually have any great cards out of the three packs. There was no legendaries, no epics. Um, there might have been an epic, I can't remember. If there was, it wasn't very good. Um, so our first one is a Bilefin Tidehunter. That's the 2 mana for 2-1, summon a 1-1 one, one ooze with taunt. We've seen this chappy before. And much like the Dark Arakoa, the uh, Nerubian Prophet, and a few others, you know, these guys are fairly common on the ground, it seems. So move down and we get our Twilight Elder. This is a, a good solid card, it's a 3 for 3-4. Three, At the end of your turn, give your Kavan plus 1, plus 1 wherever it is. So this is one of these cards that can quickly wrap your Kafan up unless it's handled. Um, it's a good card, I mean 3 for 3, 4 is a nice solid body, so definitely kind of get your value out of this card. Oh, so we get another rare here, okay. So let's quickly just jump up here. Now we have 1-1 one, one on the hunt, deal 1 damage, summon a 1-1 one, one Mastiff. See, it's very similar to the Elvish Archer, only you actually get the beast, the dog itself. So, I, I wasn't sure if it was something that could get played or would get played, but um, it does appear to be okay. You know, definitely it gives you options, it lets you kind of just finish off a minion um, by letting you summon your own as well. So, um, it's an okay ish card. I don't say it's spectacular, but you know, it's good, it's solid enough. So at the top here we've got the first rear that we came across. And it is our good friend, the Silithid Swarmer. Um, what can we say about this? It's dreadful. Um, uh, th there's no redeeming qualities other than the really quite funky looking face there that I now see. Looks like he's got a lot of his hat on there as well. Maybe that's why he's got a frown. I know it's the wrong way around, but it's okay. Um, it's the only way I can make this card appealing to me is pretending he's got um, a weird looking face. So um, let's swiftly move on. And ooh, let's have a look. This is a new card. Three mana for a 4 2. Okay, battle cry. Give all death rattle minions in your hand plus one plus one. Okay, that's interesting. So I like that for one thing, so a 3 mana for a 4-2 is fairly solid, um, obviously it is going to get beat up you know, by smaller minions, but it does have the battle cry so it is going to give minions in your hand plus 1 plus 1. I think, and I have seen because um, I did play some games before and I got wrecked by a death rattle um, hunter deck, there's a, one of the legendaries I believe can actually Resummon all your death rattle minions. 
So yeah, this Death Rattle Hunter decks, um, and I think he's going to be part of them. So I'll have a maybe look and see what we can do with this guy at some point. So let's move on now to pack number two. Now we'll slide over to this corner here, and I'm hoping. So we see the uh, Zealous Initiate. Uh, I, while this wasn't a previous episode, that's the one that didn't record, uh, Death Rattle give a random Finn minion plus one plus one. I mean, it buffs up another minion, but it is only a one one one. So you're dropping it maybe on turn one, hopeful that you can drop something on turn two, and then you, you're going to be get, get, in effect, maybe a three mana minion with a cost of two. So at least it's got an effect after. You don't want to lose Habit Tagu and have no effect on the game though. So here we have a rare, which lets us jump straight over to our uncommon. So we get the South Sea Squid Face. We've seen this chappy before. Death Rattle will give you weapon plus two attack. You know, a four mana for four four is relatively okay, you know, for for a base cost you're probably looking at a four for four five. The fact that it has the death rattle means that you know you're, you're getting plus two attack on your daggers. You just have to hope, of course, that you've got a dagger or weapon available at the time. So let's click our new one open. So it's the Bulk Creeper. Now, we've not seen this guy for a while. I think he was in our first pack, I believe, our first episode. Um, you know, seven mana for a six, eight taunt. Good, solid, big body. Uh, it's not going to impact the board massively because you see it doesn't do anything but it does just slow everything down it's kind of like a, a, a druid card for non-druids so a lot of druid cards there's seven mana you can get like a 510 taunt for example uh, for druids or a 88 taunt for eight so the bulk creeper it's a druid card for non-druids that's how i like to look at it so i'm glad We've got a recording going this time. Let's move down to our rear and open this up. So let's have a look. We're under City Huckster, not the Hulkster, that'd be our wrestler. Uh, two mana for 2-2. Two, two. Death Rattle, add a random class card to your hand from your opponent's class. So that's okay, so you're two mana for a 2-2 two, two, and you're getting a card back don't know what it is but you are getting something back um, it could be something good it could be something bad I mean it's a class card so it could be um, you know class legendary so that could be quite interesting definitely there's an opportunity for some fun there I think so of course we've come across a legendary here we're doing not too bad for this pack um, I'm hopeful it will be either the Twin Emperors, because I've seen that card and it looks to be fairly, fairly good. Um, or maybe one of the other old gods, that could be quite fun to see. Any thoughts? Anybody got any suggestions what it could be? Can I stretch this out any longer before you probably will unsubscribe? Let's just turn over and find out what it is. Oh, wonderful. Wow. So, this is a Yog Saron Hope Send. It's one of the old gods. Battle Cry. Cast a random spell. For each spell you've cast in this game, targets are chosen randomly. It's a f more of a fun card than a true end of game. I've actually seen it once against me and ended up having making me win the game because he kept on healing up my minions and I think he ended up causing damage to some of his own. It's a fun card though. Um, definitely one I want to mess around with but we'll have to see what it is. So the Yogs are on Hope's End. We've got two out of the four uh, old gods. So I think it's Yogs are on Kafon uh, Yisharge 
and there's maybe another one. Can't remember its name now. Let's have a look and see what else there is because you never know. I might be able to get it. So let's open pack number three now. We're going cracking here in this uh, series, guys. So we see the carrion grub, or rather we're doing carrion here. So it's a three mana for two five. It's probably not a card you're really going to bother too much playing. Um, it's a beast. It's just a two five body for three mana. Uh, you're probably getting for free mana, you can get a free 4 for example as well, so um, I probably wouldn't really be playing this too much. I mean, it, it does trade off quite well, I suppose, along with 2 and 5, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. I suppose it would work quite well with the leader of a pack. You play this in turn 3, turn 4 you play the leader of a pack, which should turn this into a 4 7 taunt. That's, that's actually quite solid. So let's move over though. We've got Aberrant Berserker. Enrage, plus 2 attack, 4 mana for a 3 5. Um, we get, it's fairly solid. I think you can get the uh, 2 3 version for 3 mana. Um, it's one of these ones that you're not, not sure if it's good or not. Um, the fact that it's only got, you know, it, it's survivable, but. It's costly at 4 for what it is, I mean it's a 4 mana for a 3-5, there's a fairly good chance it will get taken out by something. It's probably only scars, you, you maybe try or you maybe pop it in, or a bit of a fiend deck. So we've got our rare here, we've got an eyeball looking at us, so let's move over. And we get Muzoth, that's the name of the other one, so you've got Kafon, uh, Yogg-Saron, Nizoth and his charge. So I've only seen three out of the four. I'm not even sure if there is all four to be fair. Uh, we've got two of them though. We've got Kafon. You actually are given Kafon at the start of this expansion for free. So it's a 1-1-1. One, one, one. Death Rattle, deal damage to all minions. Deal one damage to all minions. I think um, Nizoth's the one that raises Death Rattle minions from the dead. And we see Shatter. So we've seen Shatter as well before. It's a 2 mana card. Destroy Frozen Minion. Quite good for Freeze Mages, certainly. And it's tempting to maybe create a Freeze Mage with um, Yogg-Saron now. Hmm, interesting. Maybe one of these ones will have to make a recording of you let you know how it goes. So we'll come back to our rare card here. And turn it over, let's see what we get. Uh, we get the Eater of Secrets. Uh, again, we've seen this card a few times already now. Battle Cry, destroy all enemy secrets, gain plus one plus one for each. Four mana for a two four, so it's a solid enough body. But, um, you know, you're going to be playing this if there's a lot of secrets getting played. So. Uh, I don't see a lot of secrets actually currently being played because some of the better Paladin ones have kind of fallen off the the radar, so to speak. Um, so yeah, it's still a decent card though. So we're, we're actually kind of fairly rattling through these. Um, so let's go to card pack number four. So card number four and pack number four, or well, card number one and pack number four, depending on how you look at it, is our rare. So we'll jump past it and turn it over. Oh, so we get a golden bog creeper. So let's have a look at the, what's golden. So we've talked about the golden, we, we talked about the bog, bog creeper before, I said a druid card for non-druids. So let's have a look at this. So first of all, I can see the butterflies Kind of fluttering about there, and the gnome at the back blinking her red eyes, which is quite disturbing. I'm not sure really why there's a gnome with red eyes on the back, but never mind. And even the bog creeper himself seems to have glowing red eyes and spores, and maybe it's fireflies in the background. It's quite a nice card, that really. The graph wise, I mean, it's quite cartoony to be fair. A lot of this expansion. 
is quite cartoony. So we'll open up our next card and we get the Vile Thing Tidehunter. Again, this is the old god infused Murloc here. Battle cry, summon a 1 1 ooze with taunt. Two attack, one health, and it's a Murloc. So the ooze isn't a Murloc, it's, I'm guessing it's just an ooze. Seems to be an okay ish card, but you know, there's probably cards that work better for other decks. You know, maybe even better for Murloc decks as well, but it is an option there. So we have our next card here. So we see the Dusk Boar. Now if you remember, we, we've seen this quite early on as well. Uh, 2 for 4, 1. If your opponent's got an answer for it, it it's a, almost a waste of a card there. Um, however, if you can protect it behind something, and if you've got one mana taunt, I'm not really sure. Um, to put it into perspective, you can get for two mana a 3 1 with stealth, which means you're guaranteed that you're going to be able to use it pretty much. Whereas with Dusk Pour, while it's got the extra uh, attack, it's vulnerable to anything. I mean, you know, two, three classes, so your Rogue, your Druid, and your Mage will destroy it pretty much straight away. Um, and, and there's a few other cards. Druids can also use Wrath and get a card out of it. Warlocks can use Mortal Coil and get a card out of it. So, Dusk Boar, not really there. So we'll turn over and we see the Psychotron. So the Psychotron we've talked about as well. It's a taunt themed pack here. So we've got taunt, taunt and taunt here. So the Psychotron we have talked about before as well. Again, obviously we're seeing a lot of repeated cards now. Uh, it's a 3-4 a Taunt and Divine Shield for 5 mana. Um, I personally would just rather go for a Sinjin, which is a 3-5 five for 5. Um, because you, you probably want to drop a, a smaller minion just to remove it. And that, and that might be worth the, you know, the Axe of the Divine Shield, but... Ah well, um, I think that... I can't really see using it too much, being honest. Ah, so we've got our rare card here. So if we had to turn over our rare, what do we get? Ah, so let's have a little look. It's a shaman card, okay. Six for five five. Okay, it costs one less for each totem you've summoned this game. So that could be quite useful. It's a nasty looking card. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but it's a horrible, horrible looking thing. Um, so at six mana. So if you see, you know, if you're playing this, it's it's a diff it's maybe better for a control or kind of mid range shaman where you're going to be using your uh, totems quite a bit. But I don't think you're really going to see the benefit of this in an aggressive shaman deck, especially if you want to get rid of your actual shaman power itself. I suppose that would also count though know, for the um there's there's two minions that summon totems, so there's one that is a totem itself and there's one that summons a totem. So I suppose that would link in with it as well. So but there's maybe something there. There's maybe something there that you can use. So let's move on to our final pack for this episode. Officially we're halfway through, we've just flipped over a bunch of cards there almost. So we're halfway through now, we've had three legendaries, that's amazing work. And we see an epic here, wow, okay. And we see a rare here, are we going to get a full house? Not with this one, we're not here. And it's a Nizov's tentacle again. It seems to have quite a lot of tentacles. Um, and we've seen this card, looks to be the fact that he, if you do get in his off, he summons death rattles as well, so I suppose that's you know, one of the little fluffy things with this card. Uh, one for one ones, probably not going to get used that much to be fair though. Let's turn over our next card, and we see the Duskbore. So again, I mean, imagine you're playing that on turn one, 
uh, your opponent, you know, could play this in turn two, and you know, for one mana, you're you're attacking this another creature, and you're still killing off the dusk four. So, yeah, it's um, a bit of a tricky one, dusk four, to see a use for. And we get our Bilefin Tide Hunter. Um, so that's a battle cry, summon our 1 1 Ooze with Taunt. You know, funnily enough, our technical resolve would take that Ooze out, it would attack the Ooze, kill the Ooze, the Death Rattle would kill the Bilefin Hunt Tide Hunter. Tide Hunter, even. So, yeah, technical resolve seems to be winning this battle at all. Could even take it with Dusk Bore. So, what else can the technical resolve take out? He's, he's wrecking this whole card pack, did he? Let's open this card. So it's the oh um the Twilight Dark Commander. So that's I guess the upgraded Apothecary. If your Kafun has at least ten attack, restore ten health to your hero. So this just really delays the um inevitable, so to speak. So when you're it's a good heal with solid enough body, it's five for six five. I mean actually when you think about it, uh, a four five is Four mana, so you're getting an extra. Two. That's actually not too bad, really. Plus, you get the battle cry. At that point, hopefully, you should have the health. So, you know, you bring your health back up. It's getting a body in the board. The Twilight Dark Mender seems to be a good card. And so, with the final card of today, um, let's have a look because Tentacle was off in his one Tentacle Wrecking Crew. Um, has beat the Dusk Boar, has beat the Biofin Tide Hunter. He's unfortunately not quite beat the Dark Mender, Twilight Dark Mender. But what lies behind the epic? It's the Forbidden Healing. So we've seen that before. So that's the uh, one of the Forbidden cards. Spend all your mana, restore twice that much health. I think we'd, we'd have the, the Tentacle would win over that. Let's be fair, that's a zero cost spell. So, yeah, technical and his off wins. And hopefully, we've seen Yogg's are on. Hopefully, we'll have some more technically fun soon. Take care, everybody. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time for another card back opening. Bye. -bye.